All right, you just heard White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer basically saying Assad is a bad guy. And guess what? Russia better come on board here because right now they're joining the likes of Iran and North Korea as one of the only three countries to support the Bashar al-Assad regime. Taking a look at the markets, you can see we are still in negative territory, no, though off the lows of the session there, down 45 points, a loss of two-tenths of a percent. We'll continue watching it. I'm Trish Regan. Welcome, everyone, to the Intelligence Report. Joining me right now for reaction to Sean Spicer, we have Fox News contributor and former spokesperson for President George W. Bush, Ms. Mercedes Schlapp, and communications director for Democracy for America, Neil Schroka. You know, Mercedes, um, I'll tell you, for people like Neil included, and Neil, I'll give you a chance to give your rebuttal on this, but for people like Neil that kept saying over and over and over and over again, somehow Vladimir Putin was in cahoots with Donald Trump, I think this, what we just saw, is making that narrative increasingly difficult for him. What say you? Well, there's this reality that exists, which is, as we've known for a very long time, even uh, before President Obama's administration, is that Vladimir Putin is a thug. And it's very clear that while we saw this weakness under President Obama's administration in dealing with Russia, uh, Putin was able to take advantage. And they became a rising power. Russia became a rising power in the Middle East and obviously very influential in, this, in Syria, and especially with uh, his relationship with Assad. So I think to, for the Democrats who are longing and so obsessed because they can't seem to get over past, I mean, I was on with someone earlier today who literally said that Putin put Donald Trump in power. This was a Democrat who told me this. Uh, they can't get over that hurdle. Uh, then it becomes increasingly difficult when you're starting to see the reality of what we're dealing with right now, mm -hmm. which is the fact that the United States is responding in a strong way to Russia, especially as Russia is tagging along and staying strong with Assad. Is this what we should be doing, Neil? No, absolutely not. I mean, this was a really reckless attack that in the end could very well end up pulling us into World War III. You know, Democracy for America and our members, we okay. opposed, I, we opposed I, Barack I, I, Obama I, when so, he was advocating so, us so getting okay into this war. So is it okay for a man like Bashar al-Assad to no. the assassinate way that you his own people to, the way to that you murder respond? them? The way that you respond to the threat of Bashar al-Assad is, number one, work with the international community diplomatically to get that guy out of We're power, doing something, that. That, something that prior to last week Donald Trump was unable to, to get behind doing, and two, get people out of harm's way. If Donald Trump really cares about the sweet little children that were murdered last week, maybe he should find a way to bring those kids out of harm's way and welcome them in the United States all the right. way that we have uh, so refugees years and years before. All right, so we're supposed to bring I mean, you know, all of Syria to the United States of America, and that's no, somehow going to solve everything. No, the um, the way we do is if we want to save children, we get them out of harm's so way. So here's what, here's what, what you are, are saying that makes sense. You are saying we need to get Bashar al-Assad out. And we right. need the international community on board with that. Mercedes, it sounds like we got most everyone. The big holdup right now is Russia. Uh, how does that start to change? I mean, are we, are, I don't think, I mean, I think Putin is a, is a sane enough player on the world stage that he knows he cannot get into a battle with us and the rest of the world, frankly, on this one. But how do we massage this? How do we get to well, that point in time? You know, it is complicated. First of all, yes, our allies applauded the targeted airstrike as the Pentagon said it was a proportional response to what we saw in the horrific and images. And jets out of that same it's airport It's the horrific today. images. Yeah, but here's the deal. And, and Neil, to your point, the escalation, if there is a military escalation, it does become problematic. I mean, you find that on the Republican side when you look at, for example, Senator Ted Cruz or Senator Mike Lee, some of these conservative Republicans who mm -hmm. are concerned about the fact if there would be military escalation. And that is why it is very important that President Trump and his team consults with the Senate, consults with Congress to see what the, the long-term right. strategy is. Long that's yeah. the key you here. And you know what, Neil, I'm going to jump in because we're short on time, but that sure. is the key. In other words, long-term strategy. We can't right. do this like a rock. Strategy we need here. to make sure that we have to, we know what regime we want to put in place when we take Assad out and that we are there to see it through. And that's a commitment that perhaps we'll need to make.